students welcome to sunil's tutorial i'm sunil medwani and today we'll be doing this chapter called as coordination compound let's continue where we left let's see what are the factors that affect the stability of a complex ion factors affecting stability of complex ion what are the factors affecting stability of a complex ion now the factors that affect the stability of the complex ion first is the nature of the central ion nature of central ion now how does the nature of central ion affect the stability of a complex greater the charge density in the central ion greater will be the stability of the complex greater the charge density more strongly it will be able to hold the ligands and therefore more stable the compound will be right so simple i can say in general greater the charge density greater the charge density on the central ion Greater the charge density of the central ion, greater will be the stability of the complex. Greater will be the stability of the complex. Greater will be the stability of complex. Right? Do we get this in here? That means I can therefore say. That greater the charge, smaller the size of the ion, greater the stability. That's how I can say that. Right? Therefore, I can say that greater the charge, we know as the charge increases, the size of the ion decreases. Smaller the size, smaller the size of the ion. Greater will be the stability. Greater will be the stability. That's how you find out the stability of an ion, right? For example, I can say that between Fe plus three and Fe plus two, the charge is higher on Fe plus three. Therefore, Fe plus three will be more stable than Fe plus two. The second factor that affects the nature, uh, sorry, affects the stability of the complex ion is the nature of ligand. The second factor is the nature of ligand. Uh, the more the basic ligand, greater is the stability, which it can donate to its lone pair, and greater will be the stability of the complex. That means. uh if the ligand is n ionic if it is n ionic ligand higher will be the charge smaller will be the size and greater will be the stability right so i can therefore say that the more basic basic the more basic ligand as the basic character of the ligand increases greater is the case greater is the case with which it can donate its lone pair greater is the case with which it can donate Lone pair. Greater is the case with which it can donate its lone pair of electrons, and greater the stability of the complex. And greater the stability of complex. Fine. Do we get the same here? So. 
this is these are the factors that affect the stability of a complex next why is the crystal field theory superior than the valency bond theory priority of crystal field theory over valency bond theory what makes the crystal field theory superior than the valency bond theory the first drawback of valency bond theory is that the valency bond theory does not explain the magnetic properties of the complex the crystal field theory is able to explain the magnetic properties of the complex first the valency bond theory has not explain the magnetic property magnetic property of complexes but crystal field theory has explained the magnetic property has explained the magnetic property property and its variation in temperature its variation in temperature that's the first superiority of the crystal field theory over the valency bond theory now crystal field theory is able to explain the quantitative measure of stability of the complex you can in terms of number state that how stable a complex will be but the valency bond theory cannot do it so i can say that crystal field theory was able to explain the quantitative measure on the measure of stability of complex stability of complex but not valency bond theory next the kinetic and the thermodynamic properties of a complex are explained by crystal field theory but not by the valency bond theory i can say that kinetic and thermodynamic properties of a complex properties of complex was are uh, explained by crystal field theory but not by valency bond theory and the last thing is that the color of the complex compound due to the d d transition is clearly explained by the crystal field theory color of complex compound color of complex compound due to d d transition due to d d transition was clearly explained was clearly explained by crystal field theory but not valency bond theory so that was the superiority of the crystal field theory over the valency bond theory next what do we understand by metal carbonyls what are metal carbonyls these are organo metallic compounds in which the carbonyl group acts as a ligand so the organo metallic compounds in which the carbonyl group acts as a ligand are called as metal carbonyls right the organo metallic compounds in which the carbonyl group 
additional carbonyl group acts as a ligand are called metal carbonyls that is what is metal carbonyls now uh, homoplatic carbonyls are coordination compounds in which the ligand is only carbonyl remember that we said that when you have coordination compound you have homoplatic compounds and heteroplatic compounds if all the ligands are same then it is homoplatic if the ligands are di different then it is heteroplatic so I can say that homoplatic Carbonyls are coordination compounds. Are coordination compounds in which the ligand is only carbonyl group, right? Now, home homonucleotide. Carbonyls may be classified as homonuclear or polynuclear. Right? I can say that they can be classified. They can be classified as homonuclear carbonyl and polynuclear. Carbonyl. Now, what do I understand by homonuclear carbonyl? They are compounds which contain only one metal atom. Right? Homonuclear carbonyls. Nuclear carbonyls contain only one metal atom. Right now, for example, I could give you an example like say hexacarbonyl chromium or tetracarbonyl nickel. They contain only one metal atom. Right? These are homonuclear carbonyl groups. Next, polynuclear carbonyls are compounds. Polynuclear carbonyls are compounds. They are those compounds which contain more than one metal atom. Which contain contain more than one. These are called as uh, polynuclear carbonyl groups. I could give you an example. For example, if I have U deca carbonyl dimagnesium or Fe3CO12, here you can see that. In the first case, there are two magnesium atoms. In the second case, there are three iron atoms. Right? Now, let's try to see how does the carbonyl act as a ligand. Right? In metal carbonyls, in metal carbonyls, carbonyl group acts as a ligand. Acts as a ligand. Right? These compounds contain both sigma and pi characters. Right? That means there is going to be actual overlapping as well as lateral overlapping that will take place in them. Right? 
I could explain this to you with the help of an example. For example, if I have NiCO4, so in that case you would have central metal atom is nickel. You have four carbonyl groups, so there will be lateral overlapping between the carbonyl groups, and there will be a sigma bond of the carbonyl groups with the nickel. Right? That's the reason why we say that it has sigma as well as pi bond. I could give you another example. Suppose if I have FeCO5, right? So Fe. Now there is going to be sigma bond of Fe with the carbonyl groups, and there will be lateral overlapping between the carbonyl groups. So between two carbonyl groups, there will be pi bond, and between Fe and carbonyl group, there will be sigma bond, right? Let's show you another example, guys. Suppose if I have chromium and hexacarbonyl, you have chromium 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, carbonyl, right? This is how it is going to be. So, uh, suppose if I had, say, polynuclear, let's consider an example of polynuclear. Mn2 CO10. So Mn and Mn there is going to be a straight sigma bond. Each Mn will have 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 carbonyl groups. Right? So between Magnesium and magnesium, there is sigma bond between magnesium and carbonyl, there is sigma bond, and between the carbonyl atoms, there is pi bond. Right? Let's try to discuss the bonding of the metal carbonyl more in detail. Bonding of metal carbonyl. Right? <coughs> The donation of the lone pair of electron of carbon into a suitable empty orbital of the metal atom deprives uh, or gives rise to a coordinate compound which has a metal and carbon sigma bond. There is also pi overlapping involving donation of electrons from filled metal d orbitals into vacant antibody anti-bonding, sorry, pi orbitals. That is your lateral overlapping, what I was telling you about. So I can therefore say that there is a donation of lone pair. There is a donation of lone pair of electrons from carbon into suitable empty orbital into suitable empty orbital of metal ion right so therefore there is a coordinate compound there is a coordinate compound with forms a sigma sigma bond where you have metal and you have carbon now there is also pi overlapping there is also pi overlap there is also pi overlap involving donation of electrons involving donation of electrons now remember to form the sigma bond you have to have the lone pair coming in if lone pair of electrons is donated that will give rise to sigma bond and if you have electrons donated from half filled orbitals that will give rise to pi bond electrons donated from half filled orbitals will give rise to pi bond so 
So there's also pi overlapping involving donation of electrons from filled metal d orbital from filled metal d orbitals into vacant vacant anti bonding anti bonding sorry pi molecular orbital pi molecular orbital of carbon ion right this process is called back bonding what is actually happening here guys half filled or uh, electron or uh, half filled orbitals from metal will give electron to the carbonyl group and that is called as back bonding fine do we get this thing here right this creates this creates a synergetic effect which strengthens the bond between carbonyl and metal so see you have metal you have an orbital here you have an orbital here of metal right this is vacant orbital on metal Making orbital on metal positive negative charge, which will combine with carbonyl group, right? To give you an overlap. What kind of overlap will you get? You will have metal here, negative. Lone pair donated carbon, and you will have double bond oxygen, right? So, besides this, gives rise to your sigma overlap. Overlap that I was talking about, metal and carbon bond. Now I'll just show you the pi overlap. Now um, the metal also has four other orbitals. My metal, which will combine with carbon ion. Carbon has two orbitals, half-filled orbitals. These are half-filled orbitals that I'm showing you. Oxygen has two half-filled orbitals here. Positive, negative, positive, negative. Right? This will give rise to. I'll show you how the pi bond is formed. You have metal. This is the half filled orbital. Negative, positive. No, oh, sorry. This is negative and this is positive. Right? There is going to be a bond that will be formed between these five, between these half filled orbitals. Right? And then here you will have oxygen and the half an orbital of oxygen. Negative positive. So this is filled D orbitals. This is vacant anti bonding anti bonding pi orbitals. Which will give to pi overlap metal carbon bond. Fine, do we get this in here?